Hi, Bo Bakers. St. Patrick's Day is almost here and I wanted to make something really special for you. So in true Bigger Boulder Baking style, I thought I would show you how to make gold coin macaroons to go into a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. Also, today is another episode of my Chocolicious series over on the Kin Community channel. So after this video, make sure you head over there and see how to make homemade bread pudding for St. Patrick's Day. So let's get baking. Now I've shown you how to make macaroons before in my jelly donut macaroon video, but I'm going to show you again because the technique is the most important part to successful macaroons. So pay close attention to my tips and you'll have great macaroons every time. So we're going to start out in a large bowl. I'm using porcelain. You can use glass or metal, but don't use plastic because plastic can actually contain grease and we want to make sure there's no grease in our egg whites. One of the tips for making successful macaroons is room temperature egg whites. And I actually age mine for maybe 24, 48 hours and it just makes them that much better to whip. Also make sure that there's no egg yolk in your egg whites. Now whip up your egg whites until they form soft peaks. I'm gonna use a hand mixer, but you can use a stand mixer as well. One restaurant that I worked at in San Francisco actually used to age their egg whites for up to a week and it just gave the macaroons better flavor and they whipped really well. When your egg whites are nice and frothy and almost at soft peaks, now is a good time to add in your sugar. Add your sugar bit by bit until it's all incorporated. Okay, perfect. This is what your meringue should look like, nice and stiff. Now to this, we're gonna add in some yellow food coloring because remember we're making gold coin macaroons. And I'm also gonna add in some lemon zest because it's almost the spring and that's a really great flavor for this time of year. And then turn on your beater again and mix in the color and the lemon zest. It's best if you use gel color because it's a more concentrated color and you use less. To this mix, we're gonna sieve in our icing sugar and our almond meal. And the reason we do this is because we want to make sure that the mix is really fine and get out any lumps that might be in the almonds. If you have any almonds left in your sieve, then you can save this and use it for a different recipe, but don't use it in your macaroons because it's too big and coarse. Now, this is the most important part about macaroon making and it is the mixing. So my tip to you is go slow, concentrate and count your mixes and you shouldn't go wrong. Just go around the bowl and continuously and gently fold in all of your mix. I like to go in the same direction. Five, 10, 15. Okay, as you can see, it's really thick and it's starting to come together. And what we're going for is like a thick lava type batter. And you'll get that around maybe 35 to 40 mixes. It really depends. I know this is a lot of work for a little cookie, but when you have success, it's all worth it. 28, you're seeing it now starting to loosen up a little bit and get a little bit shiny. Okay, so I'm at 30 mixes. So I'm gonna slow down now, concentrate and make sure I don't go over the line of what I want in my batter. 34. We're almost there. You can see that it's a nice and smooth batter. It's nice and shiny and starting to get loose, but it's still thick. 39, 40. And look at that. You can tell when it's done because it falls really slowly off your spatula. And then when it lands in the batter, it takes a little while to disappear. This took me 40 stirs. The last time I made them, it took me 37. So just keep a close eye on it. And you know what? Practice makes perfect. You never get it right the first time. And if you do, well done. Now we're going to transfer this batter into a piping bag that has a nozzle of half an inch wide. I like to use this template so I can get a good shape on my macaroons and I'm going to put a link in the description box below so you guys can have it too. When baking your macaroons, make sure you use a good quality thick baking pan so they don't overcook on the bottom. Then line this with some parchment paper and then place your stencil underneath the parchment paper so you can pipe directly on it. And then slowly pipe on your macaroons. Pipe smaller than the circle so you give it room to spread. I might have piped mine a little too big but they should be okay. When your macaroons are piped, here's a trick that I always forget, and it's banging your tray against the countertop to get out any air bubbles. Just give it one or two quick bangs. Our next important step is letting the macaroons dry out at room temperature for around half an hour, 40 minutes, until the top of them kind of dries out. And doing this, it will create those lovely little feet that you have on beautiful macaroons. You wanna be careful that you don't leave these to rest in a humid room because macaroons do not like humidity, so put them in another room if you have to. It's been around 40 minutes. Our macaroons are nice and dry to the touch, so now it's time for the oven. Before baking your macaroons, pipe dollar signs, euro symbols, or whatever you'd like on top to make these gold coins even better. Bake your macaroons at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for around 15 to 20 minutes or until they dry out. If you're enjoying this recipe, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel for a new video every Thursday. Our macaroons are out of the oven and they look amazing. I have to admit, I was a little bit worried and thought I'd ruined them, but then I looked in the oven and they were lovely and puffy and they had their little feet. Also, our dollar signs came out awesome. I'm so happy with that. So we're gonna let these guys go totally cold and then we're gonna get ready to decorate them. To make my macaroons look like real gold coins, I'm actually gonna dust them in an edible gold powder and just gives them this beautiful, shiny effect. Dip your brush in a little bit of water. Make sure it doesn't get too wet. Then dip it in your gold powder and then generously dust all over your macaroon. 
you want to make them really gold, let this layer dry and then go back and do another layer on top. Look at that, it's well worthwhile doing this step. Now I know what you're thinking, that I should have done something green for St. Patrick's Day. But you know what, in Ireland we don't eat anything green for St. Patrick's Day and I think these are really cute and such a fun idea. Now here's my favourite part, where we get to transform this little cookie into a beautiful St. Patrick's Day treat. I'm going to fill mine with some lemon curd and I made this in a previous video for lemon meringue pie. It's really easy to make and it's delicious. But I'm also going to add in some mascarpone cheese. These two really complement each other and I think it's going to go lovely with the lemon macaroon. To fill your macaroon, pipe a line of your mascarpone around the edges. If you don't like mascarpone, you can always use buttercream. And then for that extra lemon zing, pipe in your homemade lemon curd in the middle. And then place on your top and you have your first gold coin macaroon. Now continue filling your other macaroons. These may not be traditional Irish treats, but they sure are big and bold. In Ireland, there's a pot of gold at the end of every rainbow and maybe even a leprechaun. I hope you're lucky enough to try these gold coins and have a great St. Patrick's Day. Mm. Make sure you head over to the Kin Community channel and see how to make white chocolate and raspberry bread pudding. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you back here again next Thursday for more Bigger Boulder Baking.